All right, then let's begin with the word of prayer. In all things, Father, we know to do your will, to help other people, requires a sacrificial lamb. Jesus was your sacrificial lamb to bring us to our salvation. For that, we are grateful. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Jesus been, has been led. He's carried his cross for a little while. And Simon then, Simeon, Simon, carried it beyond. Okay. Now, we're going to look at the actual crucifixion. Pick your gospel. I got Mark already. Okay. I'll do John. Thank you. I'll do Luke. 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 You got Matthew. I'll, I'll take Matthew. All right. Go ahead and get these set up, and then we'll we'll get started. It's about 9.15 a.m. Friday morning, April 7th. Wow. Wow. 30 A.D. <laughs> and the place will be Golgotha in, in Jerusalem, or next to Jerusalem in Judea in Canaan. We'll start with Mark 15.25. Uh, 23 to 25? No, just 25 for now. Just for just, 25? Yeah, just 25. Okay. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. Okay. Simple. What time is that? Afternoon. No. Oh, wait. Nine the third hour. Third, okay. Nine o'clock. Okay, yeah. The morning starts about 6 a.m. Okay? So we have it from Mark that he was crucified, that is actually crucified, at about 9 a.m. Yeah. John 19 20 B <laughs> Sorry And Pilate wrote an inscription also and put it on the cross and it was written Jesus the Nazarene the king of the Jews Okay let's back up a little bit that's 19 20 Chapter 19 verse 20 Oh chapter that's all right. We'll get to that. Therefore, this inscription, is that the one? Is that the one? No, it shouldn't be. It should have said the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. I may have got it wrong. Who knows? John 19. 20. 20. Yeah. Isn't that what John 19, 20? Yeah. yeah. Okay, then I got it wrong for you. I apologize. Yeah. Back up a little bit. Just back up a verse. Back up one verse. Try 1919. What does it say there? And Philip wrote. Nope. And okay, it won't matter. I'll get to this later. For the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. This is the one geographical reference we really have that's helpful. Here's Fortress Antonia. This is the city of Jerusalem. The walls of that time came here and across here. So outside the city, here, was where the crucifixion is likely to have occurred. It happens to be one of the few sites that they have correct uh, for the Roman church, <laughs> where they have an actual site. This is probably, and they have the altars of the church there and everything in the basilica. That is the probable site of the crucifixion. And thus, the burial. Okay, so in that general area, right outside the city walls, and we get to that. Any question or a thought? Okay. By 9.15 a.m., the procession had traveled to 600 to 700 yards from the Fortress Antonia. This is the entrance to the fortress. Okay, you come down the steps and here we go through the western gate to Golgotha. Here's the western gate. Here's the fortress. See it here? They come, through this, they come out through this western gate to Golgotha. It's a rock quarry at the northern extension of the Valley of Hinnon that had served as a city dump 
beside the major road that intersect on the western side of Jerusalem. So, you want your crucifixion, your examples, to be public where everybody comes in. They come in through this gate here. Everybody coming down there, a lot of them are going to pass this spot, and they're going to see the crucified people, all these criminals that the Romans considered criminals. Okay? And they're going to say, I don't want that to happen to me. I'll take be a nice person and do what I'm told to do. <laughs> yeah, it's true for some of us. Okay. So, any question about that part as to where it's located? Now, I notice I told you it's at the northern tip uh, of the Valley of Hinnon. Here's the Hinnon Valley coming up here. Okay? So, this is the valley area here. This was a garbage dump, later called Gehenna, which we called Hell. He descended into Hell. hell. So this may a bit of a, be a bit of a distraction, but has that area been excavated? Not much because of the uh, city that's been grown up around it. Okay. Uh, this area is still pretty open, but this area is completely closed, completely covered. Okay. Mark 15, 24. And they crucified him. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, these are say, short. You didn't say 24. I didn't say 24. A. I apologize. <laughs> but I got to stop in time. Okay. This is, the crucifixion is an event in itself. That's why I had to stop it here. Okay. Luke 23, 33. 23, 33. And when they to the place which is called the skull. There they crucified him, and the criminals on the right and one on the left. Okay. What do we learn now? <coughs> what has Luke added that Mark did not include? That he wasn't alone. He wasn't alone. Good. Yeah. What else? It was called the skull. Ah. <coughs> wonder why it would be called a skull. Hmm. For the same reason, it probably was, I had a rock that looked skullish, you know, bald, you know, and a couple of eye sockets. Something that made it look skull-like. Or, it could be because this is where a lot of crucifixions occurred. Maybe, that's what some people speculate. Either way, this is a specific place outside the city, near the city walls, where there is where it's a place called the skull. That's where they crucify criminals. Okay? Now, what else does it tell you? Well, the, the, that the uh, people who were also crucified with him were criminals. Okay. How many people were crucified with him? Two. Two. Where were they located? Either side of him. One on each side of him. Yeah. These little details are, are something we want to look at. That's why I keep pressing the point. Okay? So they come to a place called the skull. For whatever reason, I think it's probably because there was some land shape form that looked skullish. North of, okay, let me back up for, just for your information's sake. Way up here to the north is a place called Warren's. Yeah, like garden, whatever it is, where there's a mountainside, a hillside, with two big holes. So there's a hole here, and a hole here, and a graveyard above, and it looks like a skull. And so the tourists are taken there for the site of the crucifixion, because that, uh, you know, but that's way outside of the city, and it would not have been a good place to hold all these crucifixions as examples. But if you're a tourist, hey, it looks skull-like. It really does. Okay? And that's just for your information. Okay, Mark 15, 27 and 28, if you have a 28. 
Uh, I do not. Okay. And with the, him, they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. Okay, since you don't have a 28, you can stop. Now, what does it tell us that we didn't know before? Two robbers. Two robbers. Now we know their crimes, at least according to Mark. Okay? And 28, which you don't have, which has been eliminated from many of the texts. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and he was numbered with transgressors. The people these days feel that was added. Okay? So, there it is. He is fulfilling scripture, being crucified as a criminal with criminals. Was that uh, from Isaiah? Or was yes, that and we'll, we'll get to that part in a minute. I don't try to put it here. Um, but in my conversation, my stuff later, we'll, we'll get to Isaiah. Okay? All right. John 1918. There they crucified him, and with him two other men, one on either side, and Jesus in between. Okay. Now, do you picture that? Can you figure out what that looks like in your mind's eye? 3,000 times you've seen it in the last 5 years, 10 years, mm -hmm. 15, 30, 50, 80 years. Yeah, it's a standard picture. Here we go. There, permanently buried in the ground, were a series of upright wooden beams and maybe a number of old olive trees that were used for crucifixion. Here's the skull as it has been redone in the Jerusalem place. It's a, it's a rock quarry. You can see that here. Okay? But I don't see any of the posts and stuff that would be there for the crucifixion. All right. <clears throat> If you crucify a lot of people, it's best just to set up the place of crucifixion with all the permanent stuff. Okay? So they would put, it's believed by many that they had the posts already there. You know, these upright wooden beams used specifically for crucifixion. Now you'll notice I've added a number of old olive trees. They have found, archaeologists have found, one foot <clears throat> nailed through it into a piece of olive wood, olive branch, showing that that person, whoever it was, was crucified literally attached to a tree. So we have that one archaeological bit of evidence. So we might keep it as an example, but I think that that would be more likely in a more rare situation. That if you're doing to a lot of people out of Jerusalem and you keep crucifying, you want that all nice and firm and formal and strong, not just an old tree. Okay? But I give you that as an example of some of the ways in which they were crucified in those days. Any questions? Thoughts or comments? Did they ever crucify women? Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. They died a lot quicker. They were soft. A lot of, uh, at least my assumption is that um, when they say crucified, what they mean is the form of the arms out and the, the body hanging from the, the wrist, the hands. Uh -huh. so, so they had to uh, struggle to breathe. Uh, we'll get into that detail, so, you're right. But, but, so when I think of a crucifixion, I think of that form of the body, not necessarily what they were attached to. So, Good, excellent. But, but the idea of having them carry the cross beam and then be attached to it and then hook it up on yeah. a fixture is probably no surprise. Now, the Romans were very efficient. I'm sure yes. that, you know, if I were going to do an efficiency, I wouldn't want a bunch of trees hanging around trying to use them. I'd want a nice, good, <laughs> stable thing, platform. So, there we go. There's the thoughts and such. And you wouldn't want somebody to be able to squirm and get it to fall down. Right. I wouldn't want it to break or anything. Yeah. A good, solid. 100, 100 pound crossbeam. That's solid wood. Okay. Don't use plywood. It deteriorates in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, nice, solid piece of Jerusalem olive wood. Or better yet, British, never mind. Okay, any questions?
Here we go. When they arrived there, Jews being crucified were offered a drink. There was a custom that the condemned could have a drink of wine with some bitter anesthetic added to the glass to dull the pain and the mind. But once Jesus tasted it, he chose not to drink more. Okay. Um, is someone good at looking things up quickly? You can find Psalm 69, 21. I can do that. Okay. Oops. Psalm 69. Yeah, I go to Psalm 69. Okay. Go ahead and read it. All right. Just 21? Yep. They gave me poison for food, and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. There you go. That's considered a prophecy that is being fulfilled. Okay? And I only bring that to your attention. Any question or thoughts so far? <clears throat> the process of crucifixion proceeded quickly. Simon put down the crossbeam. Men were laid down, face up on the ground, with their crossbeam under their shoulders. I wonder what happened to that video, uh, uh, picture. Oh well, you've all seen it before, basically. It's, that's weird. <laughs> oh well, sorry about that. You see them being laid out on the ground with the cross underneath and his shoulders, with his back to the cross member, and stretched out and hammered in. Okay? Let's go on now. With their elbows slightly bent, Heavy iron, uh, square iron nails were pounded through the palm of the hands and deep into the crossbeam. Then a short piece of rope was used to tie the criminal to the beam. Okay. A lot of people are speculating that the nail was put through the wrist. Okay. And it's reasonable. It uh, could have been. But apparently, this was there's part of the hand. apparently there's some archaeological evidence from some different area where it was done that way. Yep. And they know because they had a piece of wood, then the wrist, then the so the nail couldn't pull through. Right. The, that if you're going to hang them on the cross for a long period of time, you don't want the nail through the hand because it will rip out from the pulling, because it only has, it's being held up by, I can't even show you here, it's only being held by this, by the fingers here. If, you, if you're going to hold it for a long time, you want it through here, because this is stronger and will hold them on the cross, despite whatever action they may try. Okay? So hold that in your mind, that if it's going to be there a long time, they definitely would put it through the wrist. Unless they're actually tying them, that would hold the them. The tying would do the same thing. That's, okay. So if it's tying, they could do it either way. The more painful way is through the palm. Okay. So let's just walk through this as, so we're going to assume the palm for the moment. Okay. Because Jesus is not expected to be on the cross for very long. They want to cause the most pain possible in a short time. Question, thought, or comment yet? I still have trouble with thinking that God could allow His Son to be put through all this for us. Okay. What has God allowed you to go through for others? Nothing like that. Nothing like that. But your life has been difficult at times. Okay? Think of the, of the Christians who are suffering in other countries for the faith, what they're allowed to go through. <sighs> yeah. Any, anything else? <laughs> the soldiers knew that these men would have to be killed before nightfall 
and wanted to inflict as much pain as possible before that time. Then, with the victim attached, the crossbeam was lifted up to the top of the upright beam, or against an old tree, where it was secured. Does this bring you any thoughts? And do you have any questions? Well, this time they wanted them killed before night because it was the Sabbath. And Correct. The, Passover and the agreement that. was that those people would not be allowed to stay on the cross beyond the, the beginning of the Sabbath. They had to be down before that. The Romans agreed with that. So the people are hanging up at 9 a.m. in the morning, knowing he's going to be down by 6 p.m. Hey, no big deal. They can cause more pain, but they know they're going to have to kill him anyway. Okay? So. We didn't have to worry about it being up a long time, so it could well have been through the palm. We don't know. Anything else? With the knees slightly bent, the feet of the victims were set side by side with the upright beam between them, and a nail driven from the outside of the foot below the ankle into the beam or tree. So the feet would be beside, they'd be side by side this way, and a nail would be driven this way. So your feet were actually around the beam. There was no platform to stand on. Oh, so it wouldn't be like this, like they always show Like they show tend it. to show it, right. They tend to show it crossover and the nail driven through here. But the probability is that their feet were on the side and nails were driven in the side. It's more secure if you drive it in this way through the foot. Okay, because they're going to be doing a lot of pushing, but there would have been no platform. Not, not one cross has shown that. Okay, but actors need platforms. <laughs> okay, now let's, let's look at it. Since there were only three being crucified today, they were each attached to an upright beam. And not, no, no tree in my opinion, in this case. Alright, notice, the knees are bent, the elbows are slightly flexed. You can, not this one, or the, but this one here. Okay? There's a definite reason for having them be flexible on the cross. Okay? It's to cause them to suffer more. Question, thought, or comment yet? And we'll talk about how that happens once the crucifixion goes on. This is just a process of becoming crucified, of being crucified. Imagine bringing these guys pounding nails into somebody. Somebody. <laughs> oh, there's. Uh, yeah. Violence. They were kind of used to violence, much more so than we are today. Well, these are these are Romans that are driving the nails. Right. That, the, that's what they do for a living. They're executioners. Yeah. And, and if if they have a crowd of people, they pull the short little swords and they just hack them. And go, it's no big deal. This is what they do. I don't understand it. I, I would have great difficulty with the concept of it, even. But it is a fact. Well, worldwide, though, I mean, there's been many, many times where people killed over and over, and that's what they did for a living. Yeah. Think of mass graves. People just shot through the head and dropped in a grave. Or the um, ovens of the, uh, the whole Hitler's people. Um, this violence is in all of us in some form if it, we were driven to it or had enough authority being challenged. Um, these are not sins that are any, just anywhere else. You may have treated a cat poorly at some point in your life or something. We all have this in us. It's part of the human nature now. The sinful nature. Which is why Jesus had to die. That's why he had to come and go through this. That's why he chose to follow God's plan and have faith in God, the Father. He didn't like it either, by the way. Jesus was not happy there. <laughs> okay? He did it for us, for those people who needed salvation. Any questions, thoughts, or comments then? Mark 15, 26. I hope I got it right. 
and the inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. Okay, what did that tell us? That there was some kind of a, this is why he's being killed sign. Where was the sign? That we don't know yet. It was somewhere around there. There's an inscription saying this guy is the king of the Jews. Does that tell you anything? I suspect that probably most people that were killed, they had something for the passerbys to understand what they did wrong so that they wouldn't replicate that. Yeah, I would think that was true too. They don't bother telling us if the other people had their uh, little yeah, signs. Might have said thief or murder or whatever. Yeah, but rebellion, uh, terrorist, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Matthew 27, 37. Okay. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Okay, what, you, what has Matthew told us that Mark did not? Where they put it. They put it over his head. Yeah. So something is back here behind his head and above it. Okay? That's it. It could be the whole, you know, the, the standard cross is that it comes from higher above, comes down to the cross beams. Okay? Or it could be just a sign stuck in a hole there, a little sign above it. We don't know. What does it tell us beyond that? They put his name there. They put his name on it. Yeshua. Okay. Means the Lord saves. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? Isn't that? The Lord saves is the king of the Jews. How about that? Okay. John 19, 19 through 20a. I hope I got it right. Go ahead. I know. Go ahead. Now's the time. And Pilate wrote an inscription also and put it on the cross. And it was written, Jesus the Nazarene, the king of the Jews. Therefore, this inscription many of the Jews read. Okay, the that's, that's the place to stop. Thank you. So, what does this tell us now? What more is, have we learned? Well, where they, yeah, they, where they thought Nazarene. he was from. Good, what? Where they thought he was from. Where they thought he was from. Come on, there's more to this now. Keep coming. Okay, well, I mean, the, the Jews can read the inscription. Yeah. Well, they were literate. So yeah. some of them should certainly read. Good. Mm -hmm. So it's big enough to read. Mm -hmm. Little tiny print is not going to work. It's got to be big enough that you can see the crime, this person, and close enough that it's not like a billboard. You know? Somehow it's got to be reasonable. So it can't be too high off the ground. Okay? Anything else? A lot of people read it. A number yeah. of people read it. That's I, right. One, one of the things that I just noticed is it said Pilate also wrote. Thank you. And we don't know that Pilate was a scribe, but it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. It's like saying the president did this. Yeah. No, it's the, he authorized this. Pilate did it, this. His instruction. Remember, he's a smart politician. He's out to get them. He's after the Jewish leader. So he's saying, ha ha. I am telling you, this guy is the king of the Jews. <laughs> he, that's his crime. Is yeah. he trying to say to nobody better repeat what he's done? That's right. This is what happens to your kings when you declare them. Well, the, the other thing that you could look at is he might be telling the uh, people who, who were uh, the relig religious cult, uh -huh. you, you are not the king. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're not the rulers either. Yeah. Okay. This, if you were, this is what I would do to you. Pilate is sticking a knife in the religious leaders and twisting it. This is the king of the Jews, he says. Okay. Let's... He thinks he's being facetious. But of course. But he's really saying the truth. Right. It, strictly, he doesn't know that. Yeah. I mean, that's understood. We know that. Right. So let's finish that. John 19, 26. C through 22. You've got to skip a little bit in between there. And it was written in Hebrew. And it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and in Greek. And so the chief priests of the Jews were saying to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Okay, what does this tell us? 
that the Jews didn't like what he wrote. The religious leaders did not like that at all. And it didn't matter what language that you spoke, it was going to be declared. That's right. Yeah. This guy is accused of being the king of the Jews, turned over to me, Pilate. <laughs> oh, he's so, he's such a smart politician. He's really a... Well, and for someone to come to Pilate and say, we don't like this, you should change it, it was important to them, apparently. That's right. It sure was. You know, he said he was the king of the Jews. <laughs> no. See, this is just beautiful. <laughs> Pilate did a, a really terrific job on them, in my opinion. Anything else strike you? Chief priests. Oh yeah. Okay, here we go then. Then the sign with the written official charge was secured above the head of the condemned and could be clearly read. The one over the head of Jesus declared in three languages, Hebrew, Latin, Greek, that he was from Nazareth and that he was the king of the Jews. I find it interesting that you've got it written on wood here. And I hadn't considered what they might have written it on because they don't tell us, but there's a lot of different materials that would have worked. Okay. But wood was probably one of the cheaper ones. It was quick, easy to come by, easy to carve. You don't want paper, water. You don't want something fancy like rock. I mean, this is just the easiest material to work with. And it's easy to burn up when it's done. Or, or, I mean, like with this, it looks like it's carved in. They could have just used a piece Chalk. of charcoal or yeah. something. On it. But it was readable and in three languages, which is something impressive. Okay. This is off the track a little bit. Do you think they did this for every criminal that would be at saying what he'd done? No. I doubt it. If it's a common crime, like stealing, robbery, insurrection, whatever, big whoopee, we just tell them this is a, this is a criminal and let them die. But this one, Pilate is specifically going after them, king of the Jews. This is your king I'm doing this to. Oh, this is, no, I think this is special. Definitely. Because Pilate is really sticking it to them. They deserve it. Okay. But you have to remember that somebody wrote it in Hebrew for him, and someone put it in Greek for him. I'm not sure, he would have spoke Latin, but I'm not sure too much about the Greek, but he would not have written in Hebrew himself. Probably Greek, because um, Greek but, was, at that time, I believe, was the international the, language. The Koine Greek was the general language of finances and stuff throughout the area, but his personal Roman language is Latin. Right. So he'll know that one for sure. He'll probably know the Koine Greek, but he would not have been able to write up the Hebrew. No. He'd only been there a short time anyway. He wouldn't care. So somebody wrote the sign for him, and see, his name is on it. Jesus of Nazareth, Rex, King, etc. So this is an interesting sign. I found it on the internet, of course, and I liked it. Any question or thought or comment? As soon as the men had been crucified, the message got back to the chief priest that Pilate had proclaimed Jesus to be the king of the Jews. Caiaphas was furious. Jesus had never been accused of being a king, only claiming to be a king, the Messiah. After all, Everyone knew that no Jewish king came from Galilee. Caiaphas requested that Pilate change the charges, but Pilate stood firm. Jesus had been charged by the religious leaders and convicted by the Romans of being king of the Jews. Okay, so now we understand it. Any questions? Thoughts? Matthew 27. 36. 36. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. That's it. That's the next step. They've got him crucified. He's up there. Signs up there. The others are crucified. Hey, now it's just a waiting game, right? So they sit down and began to watch. Any questions or thoughts? 
Okay. The three criminals were now crucified. Now it was just a matter of time. The guards settled down to keep watch. Crucifixion was, after all, death by exposure. A slow torture that could take three days. Okay, any question? Thought? Well, we know in Jesus' case that he'd been beaten badly ahead of time, so for him, he's not going to have the endurance. Correct. He couldn't even carry his cross beam the whole way. Yeah. Okay, so he's weak anyway. But they had a good time because he's going to die today anyway, so they weren't too concerned about that. Okay, so, but the key is, normally, a crucifixion could last up to three days. A body could go through this and well, it's in constant pain. My understanding, they also left him up there long term. Oh yeah, they let the body body deteriorate for a while. That's good too. If you know, wasn't needed. Right. If you didn't need the space for another one. What the heck? Mark fifteen twenty four. Luke and Matthew run about the same. So Mark fifteen twenty four. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. Okay. What does this tell you now? He's been stripped. Yep. Well, and they they. They uh, did not want to throw away anything of value, no doubt. Oh, hey, but, any, any buck you can make, you know, yeah. ask the military people. <laughs> yeah, but this is also in, in uh, prophecy that they would do this. Yeah, well, we'll get to the prophecy also. That's good. I'm glad you brought it up. Okay, now, they stripped him. He was naked. I know we don't like to think of that, but he would not have had any kind of clothing on. Mm -hmm. Okay? They don't want to do that in the pictures. Okay? But they divide, they, they have all this stuff, and it's the guard's privilege to have to deal with this stuff. So, let's see what happens. John 19, 23 to 25. John 19. 23 through 25. The soldiers, therefore, when they had crucified Jesus, took his outer garment and made four parts, a part to every soldier and also the tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece. They said, therefore, to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to, to decide whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled. They divided my outer garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. That's Psalm 2218 is the one you'll be getting to, okay? So what does this tell us? What has John given us in detail now and the rationale? Tell us. Well, what happened to his personal effects? Right. And they're now gone, of course, but... Um, it also is like the spoils of war. Yep. It's, hey, it's a little bit of extra income for the soldiers, mm -hmm. right? You know, um, you can divide up, get a piece of cloth, and you can sell a piece of cloth to somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, and I doubt if you had any jewelry. That would have been really nice then. <laughs> well, and without our modern mechanization, you can speculate that cloth was expensive. It was handmade. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you look at the time that takes, that's expensive it, it relative is, to today. Yeah, it's a cost. That's true. <clears throat> Nowadays, it's nothing. It's machinery. Yeah. Like you, the Industrial Revolution. But in those days, everything was handmade. Well, and, and it makes a point of saying that the tunic was seamless. Right. That's the inner garment. So that would make it more valuable, yes. which is why they cast lots rather than just, you know, ripping it up or whatever. Correct. Because that would have been worth more. Correct. You could sell it as a garment. Oh yeah, absolutely. And that way, now, this is going to take a little time to do, isn't it? Now, hey, you know, let's, let's figure out how best to do it. Come on, I'll, I'll take you on. I'll, I'll give you odds, you know. They start gambling. The guards of the execution squad were allowed to have the personal belongings of those whom they crucified as a bonus for doing the task. Hey, some of them, you know, if it's a king, he might have had some good stuff. He didn't in this case, but he might have. Others might. Okay. Any question or thought? 
They divided among themselves Jesus' cloak, his belt, his head covering, his sandals. But when it came to the tunic, his undergarment, they decided to throw dice. Besides, gambling helped pass the time. They were going to be here for nine hours. Or whatever their time of duty was. And, they, you know. and this is a pair of dice from that time period. Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. Okay? So, I think they start doing these things because it takes time. And it's boring otherwise. And this is a really nice way to they can start doing this dice thing. And get a nice tunic out of it, maybe. We don't really know that it was dice. No. Because it could have been stones. It could have been bones lots, or It could have been a number of things. Well, I'll take the comment that they call it dice, and I'll give you this okay. picture. <laughs> Okay, and it happens to have the number six and five and four and such on it. I just think that's cute. Okay, but it could have been any number of throwing objects. Okay, bones them bones, you know. Okay, anything else you're thinking? They have to look busy, right? Luke 23, 34a, and I'll read this one. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Tell me about it. Tell me about what Luke has told us here. I don't think they know what they're doing. Do they? No. What do you think they know they're doing? What are they doing? Being bad. Oh, they think they're being bad, doing wrong. They're not breaking the law, are they? No, the Romans have declared this guy to be king. He's got to be crucified. They're doing their job. It can't be all that bad. They're not doing anything wrong. Well, I mean, that was, that was their job. That in was that their... time period, in that moral character of, character of that time period. Nowadays, we'd think it was wrong, right? The person who uh, executes people for our government. Are they wrong? The executioner, the gas person, or whatever they use now? Well, used to have firing squads. Were they being wrong? Maybe not being wrong, but they should think that it's bad. There we go. Interesting. Okay, good. And what else? What else do you think? Well, go Jesus ahead. knows he's innocent. Yes. He knows he is the king. Yes. Um, but for all of these reasons, and, you know, Father, they don't know that they're crucifying your son. Right. Very good. So forgive them because For, they don't. They, they don't really get don't it. understand. They don't get it. The real details involved here. They're just doing what they're told. Mm -hmm. okay, anything else? Very good. Well, to ask for forgiveness for someone who is torturing you, um, that yeah. that that tells you a lot about Jesus's character. Yes, it Absolutely. does. That's hard to do. And you've got to say that tells you a lot about God's character and the forgiveness that we all get. Because he is the image of the Father. That's right. And maybe that gives us a sense of what we need to do. Or try to do. Or, or try to want to do. <laughs> it's hard to forgive someone who's injuring you on purpose. Mm -hmm. But if they really don't understand what they're doing, that how much they're hurting you, or how much they're violating God's law. Think of the, of the Christians who are cru killed by other people of other faiths, like the Muslims over in other countries. They think they're doing God's, God, uh, they're doing Allah's bidding to kill these people. They don't think they're doing wrong. Should they be forgiven by the person being killed? That's hard. But that's what Jesus did. Go ahead, I'm sorry. You were going to say? Well, I, I just had several things go through my mind. Times that I felt I or we were wronged. And I had to forgive. Or I chose to forgive. Um, you know, whether they understood the extent of the wrong that was being perpetrated, 
know, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they didn't think it was wrong. Or they didn't think it was wrong. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Anything else? Any other thought or question so far? As the initial pain lessened, Jesus noticed the guards gathered nearby. They were gambling for his possessions. They were ignorant of the love of God. If they knew what injustice was happening, they should have taken Jesus down from the cross. Jesus did not hold them guilty. So loud he prayed to the Father, do not hold them guilty for they are ignorant of their sin. This is the person I like to follow. This is the person I want to be like. Because I know he's morally correct. Mm -hmm. I just have real problems for giving people the times. <clears throat> Any question or thought or comment? Well, I think all of us have on occasion done things not realizing what we were doing might cause harm. Yes. You know, you get in a traffic accident because you did something wrong behind the wheel. Yes. You're, you're not, you don't start out saying, I think I'll wreck somebody's car today. <laughs> yeah, right? Usually. <laughs> but, but, right. but it's, it's, in this case, Jesus is noticing that these people do not know what they're doing. They have no concept of, Happens. of, of, it, of, it, of God's will in this. Mm -hmm. They have no idea. They're just doing their job. Well, or you, or you could say they're doing God's will. They are. They just don't know it, just as Judas yeah. did God's will, but didn't know it, and he ended up committing suicide. Mm -hmm. So, it's tough. It's tough. While all of this was happening, the Jews of Judea were clearing their homes of all the leaven and taking it to the temple to be burned. For the Jews of southern Israel, this was the day of preparation for Passover, which would begin when night started. <clears throat> Any question or thought? Yeah, I have a question that might be off track a little bit. Okay. If they took all their leavening and had it burned, what did they do when they wanted to make more bread? I have no idea. Okay. I just wondered if they... They've got to keep something somewhere I, I, or that's, find some Gentile that has your leaven. But, <laughs> but I mean, I have read someplace, you know, to not, not find any leavening in your house, but... In reality, you know, dry yeast will last a long time. Well, it could be that they kept the yeast, but not what it was leavening. They didn't keep it yeah. as bread. Well, that's what I was wondering. That would be my best guess. I really don't know. Okay? But anyway, they're supposed to get rid of it for a particular mm -hmm. reason and to start fresh. Okay? Any other question or thought as to the crucifixion here? Getting us back on track. Sorry. Okay, no problem. In that case, next time we get together, Satan is going to tempt Jesus. <laughs>